everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have another watch me work video and this video is going to be a little different i'm going to be showing all the clips today in real time there's going to be nothing sped up or fast forwarded this way you could to see how fast or slow really i work on my clients you get to see every aspect from me removing product doing the fill cuticle work and drawing and everything like that so this is the set that we're going to be doing today it's this it's kind of a trendy look the kind of side french but with this french we added the cat eye effect this kind of velvet crushed velvet look very dimensional and this is my client's previous set when it was freshly done perfect for fall if you're interested in this color it's one of madame glam's new fall colors and you can use tabitha for 30 percent off their website so i decided to record this video after i started removing product and crystals um but this set actually looked real good after about four weeks of wear now in this video i'm going to kind of keep down the commentary and the narration um, just so you can really absorb and and see me working in real time It's gonna be a little bit of a lengthier video as I'm sure you can tell so I'm just gonna be adding a little tidbit of information, but mostly just letting you guys watch I'm using the Poochie's Nails Smooth Top Extra Coarse Bit and I'm just using this to remove the gel polish from the surface of the acrylic. I'm using this bit at about 20,000 or more RPMs. That way it doesn't get stuck or caught on the nail and create more friction and skip around. It does sound scary using it at that high, but that's what you really need to get a very smooth file and not produce a lot of heat. I'm using the skiver bit from Atwood Industries to remove the dead skin from the nail plate. This dead skin, as we know, is called the cuticle. So I'm just using this bit very parallel to the nail as not to create any type of ring. And because of this angle, it's kind of hard to tell how parallel it is to the nail. Because we have to switch angles to get near the sidewall area, it can kind of look like we're not holding it as parallel, but make sure you're not holding this at a high angle, kind of like you would a pencil. Do not do it that way. You want to lay it almost flat to the nail or as flat as possible. This way you don't create a ring. 
And this is also gonna help push back that skin, which is called the epinicium. That way we have more space to work and do our fill and get our product as close to the skin, but not on the skin as possible. I'm using the round bit from Atwood Industries to remove the callous and dry skin that is connected to the epinicium. Just going ahead and exfoliating that off. I'm using this bit um, kind of at a medium speed, a little faster than I'm using the skiver bit. The skiver bit we are going to want to use really, really slow so we don't damage the nail plate. This bit we can turn up a little more. We're just mostly using this on the skin. This doesn't hurt at all. You don't want to turn it up real high. It can be uncomfortable and you can hurt your client, but this is a safety bit. If you use it at the right speed, you don't really have to worry about that. And again, this is just exfoliating all that dead skin from around the cuticle area. And I'm just going back and forth with this bit. I'm doing it on, on reverse and going from left to right and forward, going right to left. They were removing the skin from all different directions. So don't be afraid to go in multiple directions to get the angles in the skin and the areas you're wanting to really get. So before I do the fill in today's video, I'm going in and regaining the shape. I generally don't do this unless I'm doing a permanent design, um, which is basically like a design made with the acrylic or builder gel, which is inset or inlaid within the nail. This is the only time I usually shape before um, doing our refill. The reason why I wanted to do it today is because the edges of her nail um, were a little more sheer with the acrylic. So I wanted to go ahead and take that area down. And the way we taper, or the way I taper in shape specifically, I'll kind of taper it a little more narrow nor towards the sidewalls. That's the free edge. And because these nails were mostly going to be nude, I wanted to make sure that her nail had a consistent tone. And I hope that that makes sense. I'm sorry if it doesn't, but nonetheless, you got to see um, how I kind of go in and shape the nails, which I hardly ever put in videos. And I actually caught it twice. You'll see me actually do a little bit of shaping after I did the fill, which is our final shaping. So I cleanse the nail with Young Nail Swipe. And then I'm going to be using the Gel Bottle Ink Clear Rubber Base. And this is going to be what I use in place of my primer. This is a technique I've been using for a while now. And I get a lot of questions and I've kind of been leaving it 
elusive and out of videos. It's something I actually have to credit my mother for. She came up with this idea and this came to be because I feel like the adhesion of gel enhancements, builder gel, hard gel, is superior to acrylic. And I was like, I really wish I could just use the base from there somehow. But also, there's certain reasons that I like acrylic, certain things you can do with acrylic you can't with builder gel and, you know, vice versa. And she was like, well, why don't you use the, the that stuff, the base stuff first, cure it, and then apply the acrylic over it. And I was like, okay, cool, let me try. And I tried it with her, and she had a problematic nail. It's, it's her pointer on her right hand, and that's usually the nail people have problems with or on their dominant hand. Um, just because you use it often. Long story short, she didn't have any problem, any lifting at all. And so I swear by this technique, I apply that base gel, I cure it, and then we're going to go in with our acrylic application. I, I don't wipe the nail, anything like that. I just polish it on to the natural nail, cure it, and then apply my acrylic. And that is going to give you superior adhesion. I've been using it. I've used it. I don't even know how many times over months and months and months. So it's tried and true for me. I don't know about any other base gel. I just specifically and have exclusively only used the gel bottle ink. And it is amazing. It is amazing. When I tell you, I get like not even that little little bit of lifting i rarely even get clients with that oh so i have never had this fail on me since i've been using this process it it comes highly recommended it's probably one of my best greatest tips or tricks i have for you and the only thing i ask of you is if you order this product because you heard me talk about it today just put in the comments or notes when you order from the gel bottle ink that you heard it from so this is really just a gem of a video i've showed you shaping i'm going to show you more shaping i am doing this video in real time and i'm giving you my secret to non-lifting nails i mean that deserves a thumbs up i think go ahead and comment down below and subscribe just for that <laughs>
So along with the gel bottle ink gel base as a trick for non-lifting nails, you also gotta make sure your structure is correct. Having nails that are thick at the cuticle area can and will cause lifting no matter what primer you use. So you wanna make sure you have it nice and tapered and flush. This was a great clip to show you guys how flush it needs to be at the cuticle area. Even though this bead doesn't go to the cuticle area, it's at a distance where you can see how flush it needs to be. And you see it goes literally so flush from the what would be the cuticle area. So let's imagine that pushed up at the cuticle area and you see how flush it is. You could probably, if you ran your finger across that, you probably would barely even be able to feel that. That's what we're looking for, but at the cuticle area. And I hope that makes sense. So that same concept, just move that up. And that's going to help you also not have lifting at the cuticle area. So the primer and base is really important, but also structure does matter. And you can see how close we are towards the cuticle area of the epinichium it's just like a hair's distance away this is really really zoomed in you can see how flush it needs to be and we'll also get this more flush when we do our finished filing so this is me shaping the nail and this is how i hold the hands and my file the positions when i shape the nail now if you've watched for a long time you know i always say it's very difficult for me to record shaping so that's why i usually don't capture it and hopefully you can kind of tell why it's because of the angle in which I shape the nails. It's really nothing super crazy and secretive. I just prefer to shape the nails like this. I can really gauge the, the shapes and proportion of the nail if I need to shape it a little more inward, straighten, like I can compare all the nails. If a finger twist or a nail bed is imperfect, I can kind of, you know, tell and, and see from a different perspective, a better perspective to make more unison shapes. So that's why I shape from that direction. So I'm going in and finish filing the surface, go ahead and smooth it out. And I'm using the Poochie's Nails, and this is the fine grit smooth top bit. And after I do this, I'll be going in with my cross cut bit. So as many of you guys are familiar, I use my cross cut bit in place of a hand buffer because I like to get real nice and tight around the cuticle area. And that can be very uncomfortable with a hand buffer to your client. So when I go in with the cross cut bit, it's a bit that's similar to a sanding band in texture, just made in metal.
after we finish buffing the nail, we're going to dust the nails off and get ready for our artwork and polish application. So I'm using the Bambina Art Liner. It's a gel liner. The Wildflowers Cat Eye Gel Polish in Red Fuchsia. And I'm using two of the Cat Eye Gel Magnets. Please make sure you're using ones that are specifically for cat eyes because they are they do have a certain strength they need to be and these are very very strong magnets so using the blue long striper brush from wildflowers nails and i'm just going in and drawing this shape getting it the thickness i want the angle i want and i'm going to be just drawing this on all of the nails curing it in the light every you know probably two or three nails you can do it every single nail and switch hands and then after they're cured i'm going to go in with a second coat and then our cat eye
with the cat eye, you're going to want to hold the magnets vertically and parallel to the nail and kind of push in the pigment to the center and then also on the top and bottom and again push the pigment towards the center with the magnets and then you'll get this effect where it almost looks like the pigment completely disappears and the nails black and then it flashes and shows now when we usually traditionally use cat eye we usually do that kind of straight line that's you know vertical or diagonal on the nail but this is just a different way you can do like ombres very patterned designs you can do so much with cat eye so don't be afraid to experiment so you can see i'm holding it to the left and the right and you can see those metallic pigments moving within the nail and so you can see i'm just tracing over each design and moving it with our magnets where I want it to be. We were just going to leave this the cover pink as the nail bed color, but I decided that I thought it needed to be something a little more brown tone, kind of a fleshy nude a little bit. My client and I decided to go ahead with this color as the nail bed. And even though it was an afterthought to do a nail bed color, I honestly would have done this the exact same way because you don't want to bulk up the free edge in doing a layer of new two layers of the art gel the layer of the cat eye and then top coat that can be a lot on the free edge and you'll lose your sharp coffin or stiletto almond whatever shape you have it'll kind of distort and get bulky so even if this wasn't an afterthought i would still do this the same way that way it's not so much product down there on the free edge this is just a beautiful, beautiful sheer nude color that I really recommend you investing in. It's a beautiful color. So lastly is top coat. 
you can use your favorite gel top coat i'm actually trying one out in this video but i showed you guys a clip of the vetro gold line it's a pretty decent top coat i like the joy of mia top coat there's so many i enjoy i'm trying a different brand out in this video but i just still want to give you guys a recommendation of a good top coat so after i top coat and fight with this lint i'm gonna go ahead and cure the gel and the light for the recommended time and that is going to be our final look guys Thank you guys for watching i really hope you like the style of video let me know below do you like it sped up and a bit shorter do you like the real time clips even though it's a longer video also if you enjoyed the music go ahead and leave a little treble clef or music note down below don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and i really appreciate you guys for watching bye I just had to come back because look at this effect in this oh, it's so nice this is such a, like a very simple but impactful look hey okay, guys i'm really gone this time don't don't forget to turn on your post notifications too after you subscribe all right bye